everyone, it's Catherine with Ready, Set, ABA, and I wanted to go over some examples of positive and negative reinforcement and positive and negative punishment, and also talk about some ways to remember this that have clicked for some students lately. So we know that reinforcement, since there's that green arrow up here, is anything that is added or taken away to the environment that increases the behavior in the future, that increases the probability of it occurring again. So with positive reinforcement, Positive reinforcement is something that is added. So something usually that is good, that is added, that we like and enjoyed. So we're going to engage in that behavior again. Negative reinforcement is when something is taken away. And in this example, um, or in this statement, stimulus removed that increases future behavior. So think of this. So negative reinforcement, something that we don't like is removed. So that's actually a relief for us. We've escaped or avoided something that was non-preferred or aversive to us, like a really loud room, or we um, escaped the rain by running inside, or we were, you know, really, really thirsty, and we were able to drink some water to remove that thirst. So we have to think about the motivation to really understand if it was positive or negative, and look at was something added or taken away. So when we think about this, uh, one way to do this in scenarios is by breaking it down into three steps. So first, we want to ask ourselves, what is the behavior? Then was something added or taken away? And then did the, what happened to the behavior? Did the behavior increase or decrease? And that's how we can know if, if it increased its reinforcement, if it decreased, then it's punishment. So for this example, let's say, um, the using the umbrella in the rain. Okay, so what's the behavior? So let's say that um, we have a student that was walking outside and then it started raining and they, they were looking around for some way to escape the rain and they saw an umbrella over on their porch. So they ran over, grabbed the umbrella and they were able to escape the rain, get into their car. So the behavior, if we look at this, the behavior is going and grabbing the umbrella. Now, what was, was something added or taken away? Well, some people immediately want to say, oh, well, the umbrella was added, but that's the behavior. So we've already identified the behavior as going and grabbing the umbrella. So that piece of the scenario, you could just cross it out. That's taken care of. Was something added or taken away? This piece, number two, is really based on motivation. Was something added that we liked or was something taken away that we didn't like? Well, the rain, that was our whole motivation for going and getting the umbrella. So the rain was taken away. We escaped the rain. And so we're going to continue to search for an umbrella or go get the umbrella when it rains to avoid or escape the rain. Let's do another example of negative reinforcement. Let's use an example of social humiliation. So let's say we were presenting, you were presenting in front of class and you said something silly and people laughed and made fun of you and then you were really embarrassed and so you you left the class and you did not want to do that again let's say the class in general you dread going to so let's say it's a public speaking class so the behavior is speaking in public okay so this first contingency that we have so you're speaking in public and we have uh people are laughing and your the social humiliation is added so in the future, you're less likely to want to speak in public. Well, that scenario is punishment because the behavior is speaking in public, the social humiliation was added, and you're less likely to speak in public again. So let's look at a new contingency. So that happened, that situation happened, that punishment contingency happened. So let's look at next time. So you have to go back to class. So you're in class. And let's say that the teacher said, does anybody want to go ahead and present? Um, so let's say that you try to avoid this. And so maybe you skip class so that you don't have to present that day. So in the future, your behavior of presenting decreases. And so here, if you're looking at the negative reinforcement contingency, we're avoiding class. And so if you escape class altogether, you're not going to have to present. So first you were punished, then next, you avoid class, so you just you stop going to class, or you, you escape or avoid that block. Okay, so the behavior is avoiding class and not going. And so the negative piece, that public presentation is taken away, so you're going to continue to skip class. 
So you can see how first you might experience a punishment contingency, and that turns in to a negative reinforcement behavior. You'll avoid that aversive situation in the future. So when you're writing ABC data and you have one line, one contingency, then you start the next line. So you can divide it up into two separate situations and figure out how punishment contingencies can often turn in to negative reinforcement. I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, we're going to talk more about examples of positive reinforcement and positive punishment as well. Thank you.